Facing a challenge on another front when it comes to voting, Colorado's Secretary of State announcing that her office filed suit against the U.S. Postal Service over a mailer she says contains misleading information. Jenna Griswold joins us now live. Good morning to you. Let's start first. The overnight, a federal judge responded to your lawsuit, temporarily barring the U.S. Postal Service from continuing to send this mailer. What about the mailing has you so concerned? Well, good morning, Eva. Thank you for having me on. Uh, that's exactly right. Uh, you know, as Secretary of State, it's my job to make sure that Coloradans have the right voting information. And there were two things on the mailer that were inconsistent with voting in Colorado. Uh, first, the mailer urged people to request a mail ballot. In Colorado, we send the mail ballot to all registered voters. And we actually ask voters to stop returning them through the mail eight days before Election Day and instead take them to a drop box. Uh, and the mailer had inconsistent messaging on that also. Well, it seems many people have already received these mailings. Isn't the cat already out of the bag? What are you hoping will happen here? Well, it's very unfortunate. Uh, we were alerted that the mailer would go out uh, on Friday. Uh, so we just learned about it. Uh, we filed a lawsuit Friday night. We have not had confirmation yet that every Coloradan received the mailer. But I do think it's important, uh, again, as Secretary of State, just to make sure that Coloradans and other voters situated in the same situation have good voting information. And in Colorado, we believe in easy access. You just registered a vote and then you're sent a mail ballot and you can return it to a drop box. Uh, buy the mail or go vote in person. And we want to make sure that that message gets out to Coloradans. Let's talk about the president's tweet we just heard in Andrew's piece to the people of North Carolina to, quote, make sure your ballot counts. Sign and send it in early when polls open. Go to your polling place to see it was counted. If not, vote. You actually responded to the president tweeting, this is encouraging voter fraud, and I will refer you for prosecution if warranted. Are you concerned about voter fraud and the validity of this election? Well, I have total confidence in our election in Colorado. Uh, we are considered the safest state to cast a ballot in today, and we also have one of the most accessible elections in the nation, especially during a pandemic. Eva, I, I want to share with you that my mom's a nurse, and she's been working to save lives on a COVID unit. Vote by mail, which we do in Colorado, is like wearing a mask. Uh, it allows for accessible elections and allows for social distancing during a pandemic. So I'm fully confident in our elections in Colorado, uh, but it's shocking in 2020 to have to inform the president and last week it was informing the U.S. Attorney General that it is illegal to vote two times. And I really encourage him to stop urging Americans to commit voter fraud. We have a good system and folks should really rely on secretaries of state for election news. Jenna Griswold, thank you so much for being with us this morning and for sharing this information. Dan, over to you. Eva, thanks. There's so much going on, so let's bring in somebody who can help us sort through it, our chief anchor, George Stephanopoulos, who's going to be hosting this week later this morning. Good morning, sir. So we're hearing so much about uh, mail-in voting. You've got, we just heard Democrats upset about the Republican leadership of the U.S. Postal Service, and then President Trump overnight again saying that this is going to be a rigged election. We all, those of us who are watching all of this, we all want a free and fair election. How do we sort through these competing claims? Well, first of all, let's talk about voter fraud. Uh, in, in every piece of evidence we have shows there's no widespread evidence of voter fraud. There, are, every once in a while, you see uh, some kind of fraud, but for both in for both mail voting and in-person voting, but it's infinitesimal. But what the real concern is, is that because there's going to be so much more mail voting this year that voters could be disenfranchised because their mail does, their votes don't get to the polling places in time. They're not counted appropriately. And, you know, the other thing we have to be watched for this election is because uh, a lot of the early votes, mail votes, won't be counted until after the polls close. You could have this disparity where, say, President Trump is leading in some states in the in-person voting, but all the mail vote is out and that that would, would not be counted for several days and actually show that he, he didn't win a state, but that would then re lead the president to say, look, it, this is not fair, and that's the concern about a rigged election and the perception 
of a rig election. Yeah, so it could not only not be an election night, it could be an election week, and also it could be an election week with a lot of discontent mm -hmm. and mistrust. Let me ask you uh, in, more in the present moment here. Whit mentioned this earlier. There's this new ABC News Ipsos poll out this morning it shows the president's approval rating for his handling of COVID-19 at 35%. More data here. Roughly two-thirds of the country think the president acted too slowly. They distrust what he's been saying about the virus. How can the president change this dynamic, and how dangerous is it to him? Well, that's the question. There's only seven weeks left before uh, the election, and it seems like these views of how the president handled the pandemic are kind of built in. Uh, right now and ingrained in the American public. They're getting worse, not better, in part because of the revelations like we saw last week in the Bob, Bob Woodward book. Uh, but the, what the president has to hope for in the coming weeks is that progress is made uh, towards a, a vaccine, is that the number of cases do come down, the death toll does continue to come down. At the same time, you know, Dan, we're only days away from that death toll hitting 200,000 Americans. A grim, a grim number. George, thank you very much. Really appreciate you coming on on a Sunday morning. And tune in to this week later this morning. George is going to be talking about the wildfires with the governor of Washington and one of the U.S. senators from Oregon, plus senior advisors from the Trump and Biden campaigns. We'll be talking about the latest in the presidential race. And on Tuesday night at 9 p.m., George is going to moderate a town hall where uncommitted voters will have a chance to pose questions directly to President Trump. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.